Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about selective media engagement. Let's call it that. But essentially, Wizard of the Coast does this by promoting some content creators and banning others for life. The moderators of Reddit do this, both on MTG Finance and the normal Magic Reddit. And we have selective biases going on all the time. Uh, to the point that we now even have a investigation team, which works 24-7, joining every private Facebook group they can. And even individual members of Magic the Gathering, the judge community, they are engaging in this behavior where they join a private Facebook group called Magic for Bad, screenshot everybody in it, and then post and tell it to Wizard of the Coast. Wizard of the Coast then bans everybody in the group and all the moderators. Uh, even if they didn't comment or like the post, the, the offensive po post. And that's the society we live in. I just wanted to point out some of the, the craziness. And one of the reasons I don't particularly like the MTG finance community is they are very mean. And I can't remember any of them ever saying nice stuff to each other. So they're mean and they're very clicky and they don't accept new concepts. Everyone is ingrained in this belief that you can make money from magic. And sometimes they're used to excuse, oh, I know I can't make money from magic, but hey, I just want to fund my hobby. That's kind of a BS excuse if you think about it because if you wanted to fund your hobby, what is your time worth? Like if it's worth $10 an hour and that's the average Walmart salary, basic entry level salary of any Walmart is $10 an hour, you have a problem here because you're giving the cost of opportunity of working at Walmart in this case for making a few dollars at F and M. That's why when people are super competitive at pre-release and F and M, it never really made sense to me. If you value your time that much and you value and you need to win, then even in the best case scenario, when you win a booster box of prizes, which doesn't happen all the time because sometimes there's not enough people, that booster box is what? A hundred bucks? And you spent 10 hours there? and you broke even. So here is the typical ad hominem attacks, which uh, this is very, tip uh, this is so on par. Wait, LP, aren't you the guy who wanted Death Shadow banned? He is. He's also the guy who posted multiple redundant EV calculations of A25 versus other master sets that actively ignore Jason on comments that have value as they're outliers and hard to move respectively. He's a loon who loves spamming and has a chip on his shoulder. <laughs> like, don't, isn't, doesn't that describe like everyone? Like in MTG Finance, uh, everyone trying to uh, make money. And so these ad hominem attacks are not addressing the issue which he's posting or moderators deleting posts about variants. And I would argue, yes. That is fact. They're deleting and removing posts talking about variants. Now, did, are they doing it for a good reason? Because they don't want box openings? I don't know. That's up to you. But the, the discussion is now on YouTube drama. And that's pretty interesting. The, I suspect that OP has an ax or grind or something. I recall him posting values stats on A25 with questionable <laughs> methodologies. Like, they're taking this super seriously, guys. Like, methodologies. This is not, like, a hobby to them. And you sometimes meet people who just take themselves, like, way too seriously, especially over uh, a card game, and they just make it not fun for everybody. I know you guys know who I'm talking about. Every F&M has that person who is 
has his headphones in, listening to classic music, and they don't handshake, they don't smile, they just want to win value. And value is so overblown in the MTG finance community because none of them were making money. Like here, I'll put it out there. Speculating on cards is really hard. It just is. You need huge capital. You need Rudy capital. You need to be a store to actually make some impact and some dent. Now, you can work at Walmart using the same time and make more money. I truly believe that. I don't have methodologies of calculation, but it's just basic sense. It's a reliable, stable source of income versus a card that can go up and down. So crazy, right? Um, number one, I wish there was a kinder community. I wish they were nicer to each other, but that's not going to happen because given who's attracted to MTG Finance and given the desire to nickel and dime everyone to death, it's just not going to happen. A certain personality type is attracted to making money from a children's card game. And when they all get together, it's a giant echo chamber of how to make money, which none of them are doing. Um, it, it's very simple. The only way that you make money from MTG Finance, and I have been on record, I'll share how much I normally make. I make 500 to, in a good month, like one month a year maybe, I make 800 a month. That's more than in any MTG Finance speculation I can do. That's more than Filia. Finally, I took two and a half years to get to where she is, and then she got hit by a reprint. I think overall, she'll still be fine. She'll turn out fine. She'll still be over $10 eventually. So you have uh, this kind of core element, which is absurd. Like The very nature of what the, they're trying to accomplish is insane. The only people making money are the content people, the email, the, you know, hey, let's all do a buyout together. That to me is insane. Like, so we're going to just listen to a random email and buy a card that we may or may not like. And then when we buy list the card, we'll just get our money back at best. So, yeah, I mean, it is easy to buy a card, put it in your binder and see it go up in price. It's very difficult to sell that card. For more than you bought it at after you take away shipping after you take away your time and your cost of opportunity so when you put ten dollars in that card that's ten dollars less than you can put in a stock or a mutual fund or even a cd at a bank which is guaranteed oh cds at banks are guaranteed returns so i i just find this astounding that the this particular community is always at each other's like they don't like each other. They're either very clicky and the click kind of sticks together and tries to make money from a Patreon or they just don't like each other. And that's what I found why I'm not part of the community and I really would never ever return. And I've never ever, I, I would not do it. So here's interesting. You're a mod there. Why are you talk, talking in the third person? Also, why is that rule, if a productive discussion is happening in those threads, you make the rules, maybe the people creating and forcing them don't have the community's best interest at heart. And then he says, it's a rhetorical device. So we have methodologies, we have rhetorical devices, we have all these like things that try to make people sound fancy. It's a blanking children's card game. You can feel like, oh, it's not randomized or it is randomized. Why do you need to make it more than like, why are you talking about yourself in third person? Like it's insane, right? You give someone a tiny bit of, and I've seen this at NYU, you give someone a tiny bit of power uh, to someone who's never had power before and they sit um, behind a monitor 
and now they're a moderator and they feel really powerful. I got to protect Wizards of the Coast uh, from all these random, you know, I'm going to post all these booster packs that are random or the booster boxes that are random. I'm going to delete all the ones that don't seem random. You give a judge a tiny bit of power. You give a school teacher in California a tiny bit of power over some freshman females in high school. David Park. Judges. Right? I mean, this is a card game. A card game. Why is there so much, you know, meanness? Like, you know, I, I heard the Yu-Gi-Oh! community is more toxic than the Magic community. I cannot verify if that is true or not. But the Magic community wasn't always like this. Uh, I remember growing up and everyone who played Magic, you kind of were a nerd. And you were, you know, you were always excited to find someone who also had the same hobby as you on Instant Messenger, you'd be like, oh, hey, you play Magic, I play Magic too, right? I mean, my AOL handler uh, name was Shivian Phoenix, and then when I met someone called Joting Merfolk, I was like, oh, cool, we're in the same set. Things are just uh, very, I, I don't know how to say it, except with the, you know, we, we were a lot kinder to each other, maybe because we were younger, and we all enjoyed each other, other's companies and we were friends. Here, like, you read any of these posts and it's ad hominem attack after ad hominem attack. And it's, you suck, I suck, we all suck, they suck. People talking in third person, people using mythologies, people using rhetorical devices. <laughs> it's just a card game. What the blank? Anyway. Bye.